My favorite. It's Judd's Hockey Show. And it's the Wednesday edition of Judd's Hockey Show, which means it's Judd, it's Declan, and of course, Jesse Pierce. And let's start off by talking about your jacket. State tourney time. Go -hmm. ahead, plug the club. Let's go, go Mata Midai, uh, former state champs. They absolutely sucked when I was in high school, so I'm glad (laughs) to see them rise to fame eventually. I'm glad this Letterman jacket gets a little extra use this time of year as well. I never had one. No? I never had one. Dex? Yeah, this will shock you, uh, Jesse. Yeah, neither did I. Uh, I, I. I did not have a, a Letterman's jacket. Either. Can I please point out the academics letter that I got? Like, that's really because I needed something else aside from lacrosse, which was the only thing I was decent at in high school. You're so young. Lacrosse was offered at your high school. Yes. It was at- started the first when I was in eighth grade was the first nice. year girls was a thing. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Benilde, believe it or not, lacrosse was not big in the late 80s, at least in the Midwest. So. Uh, all right, well, go Zeps, go Class A. Can't wait till Class Double A when I can really start to watch. But I digress. Wow. Um, all right, all right. Let's let's start here. Last night, uh, let's go around the room and discuss this question. And I'll start with Jesse. One nothing shootout win, Calgary Wild. Entertainment value of that game alone, Jesse. Your thoughts. I mean, it was a playoff game. It was a very high entertaining. It doesn't sound like it, right? You read that score and you're thinking it's a boring game. It was chippy hockey. Um, Good defense from both teams. Great goaltending from both teams, especially Markstrom. I got to give a shout out to Jacob Markstrom. He's had kind of a rough go this year, but he played like the Markstrom of years past. I mean, not that Philip Gustafson didn't do well, but Markstrom really deserved that win. 40 some odd saves. Uh, Entertainment value. I'll give it an eight. Okay. Uh, I'll give it a seven. Uh, it was a good game. I liked it, but I will say that's probably pretty close to, uh, I hate, hate to be cliche here, but pretty close to what a playoff game is probably going to feel like for Minnesota, especially if they can't score five on five. They're getting stellar goaltending from Gus. Uh, the power plays, which, you know, we might get into here too, I'm sure, when you when you go over on the, all those opportunities they had on the man advantage, I mean, that felt like a playoff game, and the Wild aren't going to be a team that's going to, Honestly, go up and down and win a six to four playoff game. They're probably going to win a one nothing, two three to one, two to one type of style of game. So I thought very entertaining game, but I also thought it was more of a kind of a foreshadowing to probably what's to come if they are indeed in the playoffs. Yeah, I would be with uh, with Jesse here. I'd give it an eight. I thought it was tremendous, and the goaltending on both sides, Markstrom especially, but Gus Bus too, uh, were outstanding. It was a fun game. It was it was chippy calgary was clearly desperate and it's about damn time that they are desperate but uh yeah i think it comes back to this can this team like the wild has a lot of things right now from a playoff perspective potentially going for them they're playing a smart system i thought at times last night it got a little bit sloppy but i mean they still didn't give up a goal until the uh until the shootout um, the Wilds playing defensively a pretty structured game plan, but can they score? Can they score with any consistency? Five on five, or to Declan's point on the power play last night, what? Zero for five. Can they score at all? And and you know, last night you plugged in Johansson, you plugged in Sunquist, you plugged in Klingberg, and they still couldn't score. And yeah, Markstrom was unbelievable. And I'm, I'm sure the expected goals, if, if you went to the advanced metrics, said that the Wild probably has three or four goals. But I think that's the main thing is, can this team, and it doesn't have to be five goals, but can this team do what they did, at least from a starting point, Jesse, in Calgary on Saturday? Three five-on-five goals. It's not that much to ask, right? I mean, I think, I hate to say it because I know it's such, like, kind of a cliche they didn't get a lot of the bounces their way either and some of those pucks just miss people I mean rebounds they had plenty of two-on-one rushes too that they just couldn't finish so sometimes I think the guys are still gripping their stick too tightly and that extends from Kaprizov down to Boldy to Zuccarello like they're trying too hard to get some of these shots off or there's too much patience that Freddie Goudreau three on one for whatever yes. reason he decides to hold the puck Preach. position like I think they just need to 
I hate to say it, shoot more. Just shoot the puck. Put the puck on that. Now, again, a credit to Calgary. I don't think they were credited for enough block shots, but they were clogging the lane. Those are big defensemen there, too, that I think got in the way of a lot of Minnesota Wild opportunities. But I think that it just comes back to simple hockey take more shots, continue to take more shots, and eventually it's going to find its way through. So, I mean, the concern level, it's about where it's been all season for me, which is probably about a 60, 70%, because you do need to be scoring five on five. You're not, your defense can be stout, but you still need to get at least a goal the other way. Um, So it'll be interesting what happens tonight in Winnipeg as well, see if they can get something moving and going and jiving. Yeah, and they put out plenty of shots, 40-plus shots, and Markstrom, who hasn't been great this year, was phenomenal yesterday. Um, but, you know, if, if they weren't getting the stellar goaltending that they were getting from Gustafson, I wouldn't be too upset about this. If they were just getting even league average goaltending, it'd be, like, obviously more frustrating, and Gus has obviously carried them to wins. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if, if you're not going to score five on five, then go two for five on the power play, for God's sakes. I mean, you brought Klingberg in here, and we kind of got the full Klingberg experience yesterday, right? You saw a smooth skater, but you also saw some pretty boneheaded moment so you got the full roller coaster ride of him yesterday but if you're not going to do five on five then you got to convert your special teams because they're they're just not going to be a team from the original point i made that's going to score five six goals a night uh like they basically did last year five on five so you have to be great on special teams at this point there's a couple things that drive me nuts here though so they they did take shots they got shots um but here's what drives me crazy and jesse broached this and you're exactly right freddie goudreau who, by the way, has proven to be one of the greatest shootout <laughs> guys in the history of the shootout. I mean, he's a he's a ho- hockey Hall of Famer there. But, you know, that three-on-one where he drags the puck literally through the slot, comes out the other side, and then tries to pass back across his body. What are you doing? Like, dude, what are that that you have to shoot the puck. Another guy who is just, and I'm telling you before the playoffs come, Dean, please listen to me. Take him off Kaprizov's line for now. Matt Zuccarello in the playoffs is going to have to score some goals, which means he's going to have to shoot the puck. He had three shots last night, but he again passed up. He's looking, he is so fixated on 97. And I know that 97 loves him like a brother, but it's my opinion, like tonight, I would separate them. And tell Mats, I want to see no fewer than five shots from you. And you, by the way, are going to be the best winger on your line. So there's no temptation. His temptation to defer and to be and to try and make Corell look good is so disturbing. And my last point about this, and Jesse, I'm curious your your thoughts, because you, you watch a ton of games and the press box does provide a pretty good angle to see things. I, I mean, the game does look simple, but it also g- gives you a really good big picture look that you don't get on TV. Explain this to me. Why on earth, and Dean tried to talk about this last night, why are why are players so fixated on finding exact shooting lanes when we see now so many pucks get deflected? You can no longer cross-check a guy in front. So if I'm Reeves or whomever, I can just go stand there. And you can try and move me, but it's very small in what you can do, right? And how many deflected goals do we see now? A ton of deflected goals. I'm not saying that you should shoot from the point because if it gets blocked, it creates a breakaway. But I am saying you should shoot a lot with clogged lanes because think of all the pinball now. Like we Mm -hmm. see pucks, bang, 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 bang. And guess what? Those are the pucks that go in. So this whole thing about I need a clean lane to shoot in or I got to set up a perfect play is folly. It's nonsense and it's detrimental. When are they going to get their heads around, just blast the puck and let nature take its course? Well, I mean, you tapped it right there, Judd. It's like they're afraid to get a shot blocked and afraid to have an odd man rush the other way, which they shouldn't be because their defense has been fine and you have good goaltending to make the stop anyway. Like, it just seems so silly. Again, it goes back to kind of the mentality I think the Minnesota Wild had going into this year is like these picture-perfect pretty situations, these picture-perfect passes, these certain things that if it doesn't look good, if it doesn't look exactly how it should, we don't want to try. We don't want to be gritty. We don't want to be dirty. We don't want to get this and that. And it's just kind of, there's still that mentality. I think they've gotten out of it as of late. And we've seen that as a result, right? Again, they've, they've learned that, okay, we're not going to get six, seven goals a game, whatever. But yeah, I mean, I think there, there needs to be a removal of fear or hesitance or whatever it is. Um, You know, and, and Dean acknowledged that he recognized that that is a problem, which is nice. That's very rare. Sometimes that Dean acknowledges a problem with his squad. Um, So again, it's something that needs to get fixed quickly. 
because again, you're not going to have those big, beautiful open opportunities in a couple short weeks when they hit the playoffs. Yeah. And then from the, from the facet of them getting too cute with pucks and, you know, three on ones and you're not taking the shot and look Zuccarello, who's going to be always pass happy. Yeah. Just, I mean, for, for the lack of better words, just take the bleeping shot. Right. I mean, that, that's all, that's all this comes down to. You can put the 40 shots on net, which they did. That's great. And goals expected for, uh, works, works to a degree, but then even the Middleton play, I believe that was towards the end of regulation where he was the seas parted and complete wide open chance. And he puts it in his gut. It's like, that's, you want to put it anywhere else outside of Markstrom's gut, for God's sake? So pick a corner and shoot, for, for for the lack of better words. Get get these offensive players going a lot more. Don't be worrying about the perfect setup. Just rip the puck. Mm-hmm. And the Ryan Reeves miss. And I, oh, I know God. it's Revo. I know it's Revo. God bless him. I woke all, up the dog. I all woke that... up the dog, and I was so pissed. I was like, are you kidding? I, I screamed and said something else in, on the couch while everyone else was asleep. Are you I woke effing up the kidding dog. me? I yes, hope. It, yes, yes, it's exactly <laughs> it what was, it was. I tweeted this. It was as bad as a Viking kicker with wide left. Oof. Like, how do you miss? Ouch. And Dude, you are still an NHL player, right? <laughs> yeah. That net is wide open. And I'm te- again, that's the type of puck you, if it's a playoff game, that's the difference between a win and a loss. Right. Did that puck go to the 200 level? I saw Russo like jokingly tweet that. It went into the net. It went into the net. But okay. yeah, it was Blair Walsh. It reminded me of like when you're in soccer. I'll never forget. I did this at a state tournament and we had been practicing shootout goals and all of this. And my dad's like, remember, just kick it normal. Just kick it normal. And that's what he kicked. He hit that puck harder than he's probably ever shot a puck in his entire life. I was like, I did that in soccer once upon a time. Like, it's just, I don't know if it was nerves or again i think it's part of that gripping your stick too tightly i think they're aware obviously that they're not scoring so i think everybody wants to be that guy right now and therefore none of them have been able to be that guy and that's the exact type of goal though that if they are going to have any chance to win a playoff series they have to score right Mm because like it's a greasy goal it it would not have been it would not have been pretty it was basically if i recall correctly a rebound that just came out to him. But Markstrom was off the post, and the net is wide open, and I don't care if it's Ryan Reeves, Mason Shaw, or Philip Kuba from way back when. I could have scored in the back of that (laughs) empty I know. That that damn puck (laughs) has to go in. Everybody wants to try and score these, you know, where I'm going to beat Markstrom. Well, just rebound. Get the rebound. Get out front. It's not like you can be moved now. It's not 1986. It drives me absolutely (laughs) crazy. Okay. Okay, I'm going to get to something good here. I'm going to quit. And and just to be clear, I do think that that was a great game. Um, Marcus Johansson, 2.0, as a wild, healthy now, looks nothing like, to me personally, the guy that we, we saw. He fits in. He's fast. He can skate. Dex, start with you. But will you be surprised if... Marcus Johansson has a playoff impact because I think if he can play like this, I actually like what I'm seeing a lot. Oh, yeah, and, and, and he's made playoff impacts before. Um, was on the Bruins team that lost in yep. seven to the Blues. Uh, was on multiple Capitals teams that always got kind of ousted by Sid um, and whatnot before the Capitals won a cup. So he has performed in the playoffs before. I mean, I think that's where also Bill Guerin wanted to try this again. It's not like a guy like Fiala or even – you know, previous incarnations with the Nita Riders and Zuckers and Coils where they played 30, 40 playoff games and have just a ha- just two or three goals to show for it. He's a playoff performer. He's he's showed up in big time moments and whatnot. And yeah, just a smaller sample size of what we've seen in the last week since he was acquired. He does look a little bit better. Um, He did. He just didn't look like he fit in here. I know he was b- coming back from injuries and he broke his arm in the playoffs in his first stanza here with the wild, but he looks a lot better. And, you know, I kind of questioned that move at first and, and still, I probably would, if I could go back and redo it for someone else, I, I honestly probably would. I would have paid it for a James Van Riemsdyk. I would have probably looked elsewhere at the time, but we also came on when we did the emergency podcast, when they, that trade went down, we said, we could all have eggs on our face. He could go back to the player that he was when he was with the Bruins and with the Capitals. And then we all will be totally fine with forfeiting a third round pick for it. Small sample size, but he does look like he fits a lot better, and hopefully it gets Boldy going a little bit more. He obviously scored a goal and is trying to get some monkey and uh, the monkey off his back to a degree. So, so far, yes, I, I have liked what I've seen from him. Yeah, I mean, I again, with all of these guys that are new arrivals, you're not going to hurt the team because you didn't give up a whole lot for him anyway, frankly, right? Like, I was just kind of like, meh. Marcus Johansson, you had mentioned his speed. I think that's the biggest thing. I don't remember him moving that fast. You barely saw him move at all because he was hurt so often. Um, I think the other thing I've noticed about him is he has 
a comfort level and a confidence in himself that I think he was lacking. And naturally that just comes with experience comes with the, the years that he has. So, I mean, I think that's definitely going to bode well for him. He has seamlessly transitioned into this room and granted that's a credit and a testament to the Minnesota wild locker room as it sits. Now it's a much easier room to come into, which I think is going to give any guy a confidence boost. It's going to make him be comfortable on the ice, which I think is probably why you're seeing him transition so much easier than he did the last go around. Um, um, it seems like Matt Boldy enjoys working with him. So hopefully he can, as Dex said, be that person to help rejuvenate, re-energize Boldy and get him back on the scoring sheet. Uh, but if not, yeah, so far I have not been disappointed or been like, ugh, why? You know, so which is a good thing, I think. On Boldy. All right. I feel like this town is too nice sometimes. <laughs> he got the extension. I'm cool with that. It caught it basically caused the Greenway trade. I'm cool with that as well. But when the playoffs start, the pressure on 12 has to be turned up. Uh, he needs to start contributing consistently. Markstrom flat out said in the shootout last night, he had me beat and he just missed. Uh, Matt Boldy, I expect more right now. Like, I don't think he's growing. Like, he's been around. He has, he's gotten his extension. If, if there's more pressure there, that's certainly not our fault. That's, that's, you know, he signed it. Awesome. Uh, but I think when, I think when the playoffs start and we are, if we're putting together a list of guys who damn well should be expected to step up and play really well, Matt Boldy is on that list and the lack of scoring is driving me crazy at times. I, I need to see him more. Like, I think I have PTSD because of Greenway and Coyle and now Charlie's found a, a role in Boston, but you know, he would disappear here. Dex and I used to talk about all the time. So I probably have a bit of big man, power forward PTSD, but Matt Boldy to me is one of the key guys that when the playoffs start, I need to see him engage and play his ass off and score some goals. I'm tired of this. Well, he's not on the score sheet now. No, dude, get on the score sheet. You get the chances and you certainly get enough ice time. And look, he's he's been streaky. There's been stretches of 12, 15, 10 games where he goes in those droughts where he doesn't score, score a goal. Now, he has gotten a little unlucky to a degree, like shooting percentage wise and the amount of shots he's putting on. You'd let you, the law of averages should even out that, hey, he's on the kind of the bad luck side here. But well, guess what, man? Playoff time comes around. Bad luck, like who cares? You have to score goals. Like that, that's, that's at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. So you don't want to see him get into a habit where, you know, he goes the whole playoff series without registering a goal. I mean, that's why they shipped off Fiala. It's not that Fiala is not a dynamic player, he's having a great year at the Kings again. It's the fact he never showed up in the playoffs. Same thing happened with those other forwards that came up from Granlin, Zuccarello, or Granlin, Niederreiter, Coyle, etc. Um, you need Boldy to show up. If he's playing nearly 20 minutes a night, he's got to be able to convert more of those chances. And yes, he's still having a productive year. He's going to finish with 20 plus goals, uh, but he can't go a whole playoff series uh, without scoring because the bad luck thing is not going to apply there because at the end of the day, he's being paid to be a sniper and he has to deliver those opportunities. Exactly. You sign the contract. You can talk the talk. Now walk the walk. I mean, Matt Boldy is going to be an exceptional player. He already has shown that. I mean, this isn't something I don't think is going to be a continued trend for him, but it comes down to, he just needs to take more shots. Again, Dean Evson has said that he's a very unselfish player, which is great, but he's looking for that pass much like Matt Zuccarello. Like you're this guy. Now you are right. the guy on that line. And like you'd mentioned Judd, he's getting more ice time. I mean, he's seeing 18, 19 shifts a game, 18 plus, minutes on average of ice so it's not like he's not out there but when you're only getting two shots in that amount of time that's not an okay look and and absolutely I mean the lack of scoring you're going to need more than Kirill Kaprizov to score and get you through these playoffs even to get into the playoffs and Matt Boldy they had said is a cornerstone piece of that and so he needs to be putting uh, the numbers up. And I think that's fair. He went the entire month of February for crying out loud without a goal. We would Ridiculous. light anybody else up on fire. So maybe you're right. I mean, maybe there needs to be a little bit of harshness on our young 21 year old friend. Well, and he's six two two Oh one. So he, he, even if he doesn't want to shoot more, he needs to be in front more, mm -hmm. but like he, his physical, his makeup is a guy that should shovel pucks rebounds into the net. You're standing right there, dude. And if you're not, why aren't you? You know, like I, I can see the thing with, with Zuccarello, he literally just needs to shoot the damn puck. 
just quit trying to make, I, I know your best friends. I know you and Kirill hang out together and Kirill might yank the friendship card if you don't pass him the puck more and you guys aren't going to you know, go uh, to the party together then. And I don't care about that. Just shoot the damn puck more. But Boldy literally, and, 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 and I mean, this is the Greenway thing. This goes back to Coyle. You should, your goal going into every game should basically, or your question should be how badly am I going to be abused in front? Because that's where I'm going to be. And and if he can go out and shoot the puck, that's fine too. But I mean, there are, Matt Boldy, and D- Dex could t- tell me how this is tracked, but Matt Boldy, when a season is done, in my opinion, should have 10 to 15 goals that aren't shots, but basically are cleaning up things. So, like, it's not, oh, man, I scored 25 goals in 23. I was a sniper. It should be, like, 10 of those goals minimum are, I got my ass kicked, but I scored a goal <laughs> off that. And that's what I want to see. I mean, that was the Greenway thing. Dude, we don't need you to play, like, uh, you, again, you don't have to shoot. Just be there when a rebound occurs. We saw it, Jess, we saw it last night a ton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We saw it last night a ton. And the question is, where is the guy in the blue paint there? Because you Because at that point, you can go in the blue paint to clean up the mess. Because that's a playoff goal. Right. I'd agree. I mean, he needs to bulk up a little bit if he's going to start moving into that role, I think, because I'm sure he's never really played that role because he has such good hands, because he can move the stick well, because he skates so well. I don't think he's probably ever really been asked to be that guy, not to say that he would shy away from it, but I would guarantee that's probably what's going on. It's not a situation that he's ever really put himself in, but maybe both. I mean, team up with Jules Erickson X, see what's going on. Ask him kind of how to do that. Not that he has to go completely Jules Erickson Eck on it by any means, but I think you're right. I mean, use that size to your advantage and not to mention you, it, it's got to feel good to score no matter how you do it. They don't ask <laughs> how, right? Amen. Just do it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I, th- I think Boldy's got a little bit of a, a, a dull blade, dull blade on that stick. And uh, he should go check out my friends at Vivron and, and just go to mydullknives.com, Matt Boldy. My dull blade, my dull knives. You got a you got a dull stick blade there, okay? Why don't you go get it sharpened? Make sure everything your skates are sharpened. Make sure you have the right blade in your stick. And you should also, when you're in the kitchen, I don't know how well Matt Boldy is in the kitchen. Jess, I know you do the cooking with Jesse. Like, there's plenty of options that you have to cook meals for with feeding a bunch of mouths in that household. So you got to make sure those knives are nice and sharpened. And it's okay if you have dull knives. No one's going to shame you. It's okay to send them in. They'll send you replacement knives. Go to MyDollKnives.com for Vivrant's life-changing online knife sharpening experience. Go to MyDollKnives. It's in the link in the bio right now on our YouTube page. Go to MyDollKnives.com for more. Quit being dull, Matt Boldy. Quit being dull. <laughs> Quit being Get dull. Get sharpened. <laughs> Jesse Pierce, um, wh- what have you heard? Because you go, obviously, to practices as well as games. And I, I don't go to practices. Jonas Brodeen. What's our timetable there? Because if he's out, and I I have no clue here, but if he's out for the start of the playoffs, that's an enormous loss. Like, he is that important. Mm-hmm. What have, have you heard as far as a, and I know it's the National Hockey League. What have, what have you deducted? Lower body, Judd. It's a lower body, yeah, quit asking. <laughs> In fairness, Jesse Pierce, what have you deducted from what you've heard trying to be a hockey doctor? It sounds like they are trying to avoid him having to do any type of surgery or any more serious um, remedies. So that's why they are taking it incredibly slow with him. He hasn't started skating at all. So, I mean, I think they're just hoping that it'll heal. It sounds like it's a re-aggravated injury from something he had very early on in the season. I can't remember exactly what that was. But he came back and he's been really working through it and dealing with it for quite some time. So I think they're really just hoping that it can heal on its own and he can work toward it. So with that being said, I think the timetable is longer than what most Wild fans probably want to hear because they do want him ready for playoffs. I have probably very little doubt that he would miss the playoffs, even if this injury was still kind of nagging around uh, because he's a hockey player. Right. But it does sound like they're just going to take it incredibly slow, similar to Gustav Nyquist, how they're not going to rush him back either. I mean, obviously Brodeen, different player than Nyquist, but um, it sounds like that's the biggest concern is they just don't want to have, they want to have to avoid any unnecessary surgeries or more serious, um, like I said, remedies if they can. So hopefully sooner rather than later, I know he's still around the team all the time, all of that, yada, yada. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's going to be an immediate return for Jonas. Obviously, tier one being Kirill and maybe even Gustafson right now, Brodin's probably the one guy, if you didn't have him for a playoff series, you'd be probably pretty damn concerned, right? Um, Mm -hmm. I know they're getting by without him right now, but you need him come playoff time. You can't really afford 
uh, to have him still shelved. So if you want to take his time, and even if he doesn't get back here until like the last five, ten games of the season, that's probably okay. Take your time with it because they need him. I mean, I, I don't think they can roll into a playoff series uh, with John Merrill playing significant minutes. And I know Dumba's been a lot better this season, but or a lot better uh, lately, I should say. But they can't afford to go into a playoff season, uh, playoff series, excuse me, without Jonas Brodin. They're going to need him come playoff time. I got to think too, and my personal opinion is when he comes back, I would pair him with Klingberg because I, and I like what Klingberg brings, but it is a bit scary. And Brodine can, I, I mean, we, we've, you know, obviously seen this with Dumba a lot. Brodine makes up for defes- defensive deficiencies. And I would put Dumba with Merrill. Dean being Dean, I'm not sure about that. I could see him com- uh, continuing to play Klingberg and Merrill together. But I would be very interested to see, Jesse, what Brodeen and Klingberg would look like. Because Klingberg brings something that they definitely, from a veteran standpoint, have lacked. Um, but when he's playing right now, like, like last night again from the press box, when you sort of get the whole experience, as, mm-hmm. as Declan termed it, it's a little bit scary at times. Yeah. Like he throws pucks away and it's like, okay, that's going to be a problem. And yes, you can ask your goaltender to make the save, but I'm just thinking in a playoff series, I think Brodine and Klingberg would um, at five on five play off each other pretty damn well. Right. Well, and that was the knock on Klingberg coming in, right? Is that his defensive side of his defensive game is, is lacking. He's a very offensive defenseman, which is great, which Brodine would pair exceptionally well. He'll cover up those mistakes that Klingberg would make on the defensive end. It's what he does with Matt Dumba currently. I do say like Dean Evson definitely has the lineup card as most, most coaches do, but I have a sense Bill Guerin is on the same wavelength as all of us with that. So if Dean were to, for whatever reason, not want to break it up, wouldn't surprise me if Garen maybe came down and said, hey, no, I want to try this. Because Garen was also very upfront in knowing that Klingberg has his issues with the defensive aspect of his game. So I think he probably recognizes that just as a hockey player and a hockey guy himself as well, that like, hey, these two together seemingly should work very, very well. Plus then he's getting his money's worth out of Klingberg as True. well. You know, so I mean, yeah. there's, it's a win-win. I, you might go back one game with Broads and Dumba, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do in fact go down that path. Uh, at least explore it, right? At least see what's there. I'd see what there. it looks like. Yeah. And, and yeah, that's a good point though. I, I could see, it feels like, um, feels like to your point, Dean has con- control of things but bill definitely makes suggestions i don't know i don't get the sense total guess on my part that bill makes suggestions continually but i think if he feels strongly about something which again before the season's done separate Carell and zuccarello please so zuccarello will shoot the damn puck where where do we think that nyquist if and when he comes back which w- would be probably you know r- right around the time playoffs start if not the start of the playoffs themselves where do we think he fits in to the line combinations uh that's a good one i mean you could put him he, in his prime he probably would be really a, a great fit with with boldy but that's jo- kind of where i'm still leaning and if jo- but if johansson boldy are clicking um do you put him on a line with goudreau and felino and you, and you just kind of move sunquist i mean it does create a little bit of a log jam here because they got a good thing going i think with their 12 forwards so basically if nyquist comes back who then slots out um does Reeves and, come out does Sunquist does Sunquist come out even I don't I don't know I don't Shaw. think they're gonna I don't think they're gonna I, Mason Shaw or Dewar yeah I, I, don't, I don't think, think Sunquist comes out yeah I think Sunquist stays I don't in there just shoot this and because I am on the Nyquist trade like I'm excited about the potential he's probably one of my my favorites along with Klingberg you try him with Kaprizov and Zuccarello and load up your top line oh and God. see what uh I mean it works for Ooh. some teams works for Colorado's in the world you know if you put all of your heavy talent on one granted I mean who's the gritty player in there none of them right but right. I don't know might be kind of fun well and the playoffs are weird though because the playoffs take grittiness but you know you can get away with some stuff there I yeah. I wonder if Reeves I wonder if Reeves or Shock comes out as well um and and if Boldy hasn't so Bold, to me Boldy and and Johansson have played well together on the same line for a couple of games but it's not like Boldy's scoring yet, so could Nyquist unlock that a bit? I don't know. And the other thing, and we saw this last night as far as that top line goes, you guys, is Ryan Hartman's got to stop being an idiot on the ice. Like last night, that double minor, I mean, he lit, you know, I, and I know it was Kaprizov, who one, can handle himself, but two, you know, when you're going to go into a scrum and punch a guy, 
But it was a heck of a punch. Can we just acknowledge it that? It was just a boop. What? And in the regular season, down. and in the regular season, that's fine. But I'm just saying, in the playoffs, that's a re, you know four minutes in the box. Mm-hmm. And he's just, you know what? If that had been his first, like a first dumb offense of the season, I'd be like, oh, totally get it. But I feel like, and to Dean's credit, he's talked about it. I feel like this has been the continuing saga, like like a like a country song, the continuing uh, story of Ryan Hartman, which is just really ill-timed decisions and moves. And that to me was like, uh, dude, you can't do that, especially not in, in the playoffs. So from an outsider's perspective, I feel like Hartman is trying to make himself relevant. He's trying to find a role in which he's, you know, he's, he cleared away from last year. Last year was the first season that you didn't see the Hartman. That was very feisty and very yeah. just kind of, I won't take any S from anybody um, because he had the scoring capability. And now he came back this year, I think hoping that that would pick up. It didn't. So now he's still, I think just struggling to find his identity within this team to find his identity and role on that top line. Because again, things aren't as seamlessly clicking as they did last year, even for those three guys who had such phenomenal chemistry. So I, I, I have a feeling that's why you're seeing more of this, Ryan Hartman, where it's kind of like, ah, whatever, I'm just going to do this and, and make myself relevant because I think he's just trying to figure out. I what don't he's care doing. anymore. I'm I know, fight right? Some like, guy. <laughs> Bang! I don't care. Screw it. <laughs> or hold. I still can't tell if he was being held down or if he was holding the flames. They were holding down each list, other. They were just because the ref was out. looking right <laughs> at it. Yeah, no, he it. was trying to act like he was being held and he was grabbing onto. I think it was Tanov, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was a whole lot of nothing. And cool. fans were all upset. Stop being upset. It was a good <laughs> non-call. All right, Jesse, we, we will uh, let you go because we're told that you have to get to your hits on Winnipeg Radio to nice. set up Jets Wild. Yeah. I didn't realize. So are, are you going on like four stations there? I am. I have a whole slew. It's so funny. What? Winnipeg always calls me. It's great. I hope you get paid Fantastic. for this. Three stations, four? What? Like, I mean, three the whole... stations. Listen to that. She's going yeah. on three stations. I know. I know. I just, yeah. It's it's great. All um, right. We'll talk to you next week. Jesse Pierce, Judd's Hockey Show. Dex, take us home. Yeah, hit the subscribe button for daily Minnesota sports entertainment. This is Judd's Hockey Show. Uh, we'll be back later on this week as well. And pass, shoot, score. You know, there's no room for petty bull****.